Play ball! From Earl E. Wilson Stadium on the campus of UNLV, welcome in to another edition of Hustlin' Rebel Baseball. Today, UNLV takes on California Baptist in the final game of a three-game series. The Hustlin' Rebels looking to avoid a three-game non-conference weekend sweep at the hands of the visiting Lancers. UNLV enters into today's matchup 14-22 and overall with a 7-8 and mark here at Earl E. Wilson Stadium. While well, the Baptist Lancers, three games over 500, they're dead even at 500, 11 and 11 away from Riverside. UNLV taking losses of 9-2 on Friday and 8-7 yesterday. They'll turn the ball over to Zach Simon on a Sunday, making his second start of the year as the Rebels look for their first win of the weekend against the Lancers out of the wax. Simon, the 6'2", 235-pound grad transfer from Corbin University, former Centennial High School Bulldog, makes his second start and 11th overall appearance of the year, coming in 0-1 with a 6-even ERA in 18 innings. Simon, the right-hander, has struck out 12 and walked 6, although opponents batting a lowly 278 against him. Another note for Simon is that he keeps the ball low with a fastball in the upper 80s, low 90s. He's not allowed a home run yet this year in 18 innings so far on the hill. Going with the Sunday black alternate tops and the white pants for the Rebels here at home. Jacob Sharp filling up the battery, doing the catching this afternoon, getting Simon warmed up currently. Bit of a different lineup around the battery with Kate Higgins at first, Gianni Horvat at second, Paul Myro, man shortstop with Braden Murphy making his first start of the year at third base. Jason Sharman in left field after a good performance yesterday in right. Alex Pimentel returns to center field and Santino Panaro after an off day yesterday roams the range in right field. No Ryland Charles or Edarian Williams in the lineup tonight. Charles out with an illness. Edarian Williams spent during yesterday's game with a shoulder injury. And Gary Adcock, the 15th year head coach of the California Baptist Lancers, throws out a very, very similar lineup to yesterday. In fact, Everybody except for Matthew Darr in the starting lineup yesterday, although Darr played the majority of the game where California Baptist won 8-7 to seven in 10 innings a day ago. The Lancers going with the gray vests, gray pants, and the blue trim on the blue sleeves. Simon deals out of the full windup. There's a fastball up and away for ball one, and we're underway at 12.07 on a picture-perfect Sunday, 77 degrees and some light puffy clouds above early Wilson Stadium with the wind blowing softly towards left field. This 1-0 fastball up by the jaw, backs the leadoff man Garrett Ostrander away from home plate. And the count goes two balls and no strikes to the leadoff hitter. Ostrander, 3 of 10 this week, a 360 batter on the year. And squares to bunt, pulls it back on a slider that cuts across the entirety of the plate for a called strike one from Zach Simon. Big Scott Jones behind home plate, calling balls and strikes this afternoon. As Ostrander lines a fastball straight back, count goes even at 2-2. Two and two. Michael Goebel, the arbiter down the first base side. Kirk Struble opposite him. And the second base umpire, Anthony Prater, currently shaded in shallow right center field. Simons worked a 2-2 count against Ostrander. He has a fastball that's lined into the seats down the right field side. Ostrander, the left fielder, followed by Carpentier, the catcher. Mitchell Simon, third baseman, bats third. Dusty Garcia, the center fielder, cleans things up, adding fourth with the big-bodied first baseman, Jake Skipworth, hitting fifth. Ground ball back up the middle. Horvat dives. Second baseman can't get it. Rolling into center field on a leadoff base hit is Garrett Ostrander. It's his fourth hit of the series and number 46 on the year. Ostrander leads it off with a base hit. Simon looking for another ground ball off the bat of the catcher, Carpentier. Continuing to set the lineup, Cole Howarth, the designated hitter, will bat sixth for California Baptist. Josh Pano, the shortstop, hits seventh. Matthew Darren Wright hitting in the penultimate spot. Batting eighth with Connor McGuire, the second baseman, making his third start, batting ninth, playing at second base. Simon out of the stretch. First pitch, Gare runner goes. Throw down on the third base side of the bag. Shortstop Myro can't hold it. And it's the 11th stolen base in 12 tries for Ostrander on the year. Leader in the clubhouse, stealing his second of the weekend. He swiped second in the fourth inning after his only hit of the day yesterday. So a runner in scoring position already for Zach Simon. Pretty traditional fastball slider changeup mix for him. The second start of the year, first one since early April when Grand Canyon came to town. This one's popped up, shallow to left center field. Left fielder Sharman calls off the center fielder Pimentel and gloves it on the move. Back to second goes Ostrander, heading back on a pop fly out by Carpentier, the catcher. One out, one on for Mitchell Simon. Your baseman bats here in the top of the first inning. Three for 11 with a pair of RBIs this weekend. Mentioned the only start for Zach Simon on the year. 
Came on the 4th of April, pitched three scoreless innings against Grand Canyon. And an eventual 4-3 Rebel win right here at Early Wilson. First pitch to the right-handed batting Simon. A slider upstairs, checking the swing. And able to hold up on the appeal is Simon. Let's go, Mitchell. Simon finished yesterday's game three of six. Drove in a run. The eventual game winning run in the top of the 10th inning on a two strike base hit against Jack Selinger. Makes that heater up and away for a called strike one. Simon. Drove around CJ Masio, who walked with one out in the 10th inning. There was two outs and a one two count. Selinger served up a high slider that Simon slapped into left field. Rebels unable to answer in the bottom of the 10th inning. He slams this slider straight up in the air on the third base side. Coming in from foul ground is the third baseman, Braden Murphy, communicating with the catcher. Calls off Jacob Sharp to make the out in foul ground. Ostrander back to second. Two outs on a couple of pop-ups. And that brings up Dusty Garcia, left-handed batting center fielder. Swinging for some power on the year overall in this weekend. 12 home runs, 36 driven in on the year. He's got a home run, a double, and an RBI among his two hits and 11 at-bats in the weekend. Myro the shortstop behind the runner off second. Right side of the infield pushed towards the right field corner. First pitch from Simon out of the stretch. He's a fastball high, called for ball one. Now the power number is good. The ancillary number is not quite as good for Garcia. 12 home runs, eight doubles, three triples, nine steals, but just a 223 average. Kind of a feast or famine type hitter playing in center field today. That running fastball off the outside from Zach Simon. Two balls and no strikes. The count to the cleanup batter here in the top of the first inning. Let's go. Simon's been asked go to go multiple innings multiple times. Including five of his ten outings so far this year. More than an inning on the hill. Including his last time out. Pitched on the 14th last week against San Jose State. This is low with the 2-0 breaking ball. And it's a three-ball no strike count to Garcia with the first baseman Skipworth on deck. That outing against the Spartans, three innings, a run on four hits with four strikeouts. He didn't walk anybody either. Walks have not been an issue for Simon so far on the year. Behind three balls and no strikes. There's a slider way outside for ball four. Garcia makes a four-pitch free pass. Picks up a double, or rather for the force play anywhere around the infield. Ostrander on second, Garcia on first. And two outs for the slugging first baseman, Jake Skipworth. RBI, Skip. Skipworth has been playing first, batting fifth all weekend. Gary Adcock, the head coach for California Baptist, keeping the lineup similar each of these three days. He's used the bench early and often, though. Front door slider right down the heart of the plate for a called strike one to Skipworth, who is one of seven on the weekend, 283 hitter on the year. Finished one for four with a walk yesterday. Slightly open stance. He stands close to the dish. Takes that fastball up and away from Simon. Evens up the count. Simon working with the elevated heater here early. Myro backs off the runner at second. No hold behind Garcia off first as well. Time called in the box. Simon resetting before the 1-1. Right-hander comes set. Raises the glove in front of the chest. The offering high on yet another fastball. I mean, throwing that heater early and often. Although not necessarily finishing. Everything left up. Simon's season long in terms of innings tossed back on the 27th of February. Just about two months ago, he threw four innings against Washington State. Elevates his slider, misses up, and the count three balls and a strike. Let's go, Skip. Three runs on three hits, two walks, and no strikeouts. He also hit a batter in four innings. It was a 10-9 win for Washington State. That came in the Tony Gwynn Memorial Classic in San Diego. The 3-1 from Simon to Skipworth. Upstairs and a bit inside as well. Back-to-back -back walks have loaded the bases here in the top of the first inning. Simon looking to tightrope walk his way out of danger as the catcher Sharp goes out to have a word. Paul Myro, the fourth, joins in on the conversation as well before facing off against the designated hitter, Cole Howarth. Simon starting off really reminiscent of Noah Beal yesterday. Beal had two runners on with one out in the first inning. Was able to get out of dodge. Gave up a leadoff double in the second. And one, two, three. Putting an out on the base pass and an inning-ending strikeout. 
Stranded another pair on in the third. It wasn't until the fourth inning in which California Baptist finally scored their first run. So Beal's able to get out of a couple of jams yesterday. Simon trying to do the same on Sunday. Right-handed batting designated hitter Howard stands in at six foot six from the right side. Simon starts him off with a curveball breaking in and way low. Great job blocking that one by Jacob Sharp. Able to keep the runners from advancing. It's Ostrander off third, Garcia off second, James Skipworth with no hold, a good size lead off the first base bag. 1-0 from Simon, fast ball, slapped straight back by Howarth, evens the count at one. 73 at bats, 22 hits on the year for Howarth, hitting to the tune of a 3-0-1 average, hitting well over the weekend, two for six overall, including both of those hits yesterday when he started, scored a couple of runs and doubled as well. The eight to seven extra inning win. Swings and lasses another one straight back to the screen. The ball and two strikes now from Simon. Trying to wiggle his way out of a jam in the first inning. It's the California Baptist team that has had runners on base all weekend. Scored nine on Friday, left nine more on base. Scored eight yesterday, and they left ten on base in the win. The one-two. Shot foul on the third base side. Braden Murphy playing third base for the first time this year. It was an interesting situation with the Darian Williams yesterday. He was batting in the bottom of the first with two outs and Ryland Charles on first base. Charles was picked off while E was batting. Noah Rodriguez quickly ran out to third base defensively. Here's another one, too. It's the breaking ball that stays up. Now goes even. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes with a couple of outs here in the first inning. The wind was blowing softly when we got going about 10 minutes ago. Now no wind to speak of. Flag beyond the center field fence hanging limp. Simon takes the sign from Sharp. Right-hander set on two and two. Here's the pitch. Slider that just stays inside for ball three. Started at the front hip of Howard who turned into it. Now one ending up between the chalk of the box and the inside of the plate. So with the full count of the bases loaded, all three runners will get the advancement. Ostrander, Garcia, and Skipworth all on. They all move. The 3-2 payoff. Swung on, popped up, fouled on the first base side. This one drifting out of play, so we'll get to try that one again. It's always interesting to see the bases loaded in two outs, just how much more aggressive the runner is off of first than the runner off third. Especially with a right-hand hitter out. You, you don't want to take a pulled foul ball straight to the dome. Right on, Nicole. All three runners will be moving on the pitch again. Here it is. It's fouled back once more. Howard all over these fastballs from Simon. Simon continually going back to the well here in his second start of the year. He's low to the bases and has a full count to Howard. After a couple of foul balls on three and two, the runners go again. The pitch swung on and hammered to straightaway center, but Pimentel there. Center fielder into the right center field gap, and he gloves it to strand the bases loaded. No runs on a hit, no errors, and two men left on after a pair of walks. Simon strands the bases loaded in the top of the first inning. Alex Pimentel to lead things off against Nathan Hammerling when we return for the bottom of inning number one. To Smoke and Zam's concession stand and do not miss out on $5 Bloody Marys, Bellinis, and Jason Momoa's side. Thanks to Smoke and Sam for their support of the program.
Still no score as we enter into the bottom of the first inning between UNLV and California Baptist. The Hustlin' Rebels looking to stave off a weekend sweep. Dropping the first two games of this series on Friday and Saturday. Offense getting their first look at the right-hander Nathan Hammerling in the bottom of the first inning. Six foot two, 213 pound grad transfer. Deals a first pitch just off the outside to Alex Pimentel. He moves ahead, one ball, no strikes. Pimentel in his first year in the Scarlet and Gray. Leading the team in batting average, a 351 hitter, with 30 runs batted in so far. Nicely spotted fastball in there for a strike from Hammerling. He was a D3 transfer out of Lakeland University in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Four years of the D3 level before returning to his hometown of Riverside. Pimentel laces one down the left field side, it's fair. Into the corner it goes for extra bases. Pimmy rounds first, zooms into second. As the left fielder Ostrander's throw goes straight to the bag. Two bagger number nine for Pimentel on the year. That's a good way to lead off the ball game. Both sides recording a hit to lead off the first inning. After Zach Simon able to strand the bases loaded in the first. Alex Pimentel doubles to lead off the bottom of the inning on a ball that left his bat at 106 miles an hour. He smoked it, no other way to put it. Pimentel, a runner in scoring position already for Jason Sharman. Sharman had an excellent outing and a spot start yesterday. Left-handed batter playing in left field today. Takes a call, strike one on a fastball. Sharman was in right field yesterday, batting at the bottom of the lineup. Made an impact right away. Bunted a runner over in the third that ended up scoring. That was Myro, played it on a Ryland Charles base hit. Jason swings over a slider here and goes down nothing and two. He then singled and scored in the fifth. Hit a line drive right at the shortstop panel that ended up being a double play with Myro picked off the bag at first and then singled and scored. At that point, the game tying run in the bottom of the eighth. Jay takes down, sneaks underneath the catcher, Michael Carpentier, but he's able to keep an eye on it. Sharman's playing in his 20th game of the year, but just making his sixth start. Carpentier, the catcher for the third straight day, with Jake Skipworth at first, Mitchell Simon opposite him at third. Sharman swings, fouls it back into the mid, squeezed by Carpentier for strike three. Strike a number one on the day for Hammerling, is number 39 on the year. One out, one on for Jacob Sharp. Pimentel on second, checked by a combo, the second baseman McGuire and the shortstop Pano. The outfield from left to right for the Lancers, Garrett Ostrander, Dusty Garcia, and Matthew Darns was the outfield at the end of the game yesterday after a couple of defensive replacements. Sharp swings to the first pitch and laces one to right field, right at the right fielder Darn. Barely had to move, maybe took one step back before gloving it and firing straight through to third on a bounce. Showing off the arm is Pimentel, forced to stay at second base on a line drive out off the bat of Jacob Sharp. So after a leadoff double, a strikeout and a line out, bring up Kate Higgins with Pimentel still on second. But now two outs in the inning. Higgins has one hit on the weekend, but it was a big one. Solo shot in his first plate appearance yesterday. Over number five on the year for Higgins, hitting 287 with 17 RBIs as well. Takes the overhand breaking ball in for a called strike on the outside. Nathan Hemmerling with a one and one record and a 5-2-7 ERA. Making his sixth start, 15th overall appearance on the year. The strikeout artist for sure. He's down and outside for ball one. He's fanned 38 hitters in 27 and a third innings. Mentioned his four years at D3 Lakeland College. Struck out 220 batters in 152 innings. Higgins takes a fastball up to move the count two and one. His best year at D3 Lakeland may have been his freshman year back in 2019. 4-4, four four, the 2-5 ERA is a true freshman. 76 Ks in 54 innings. Snapping curveball that stays up. Maybe a bit off the inside of the plate, too, and it's a three-ball, one-strike count to Cade Higgins. With Austin Krizik on deck, Braden Murphy in the hole as of now. Pimentel checked by Pano, the shortstop. As Hammerling comes set, right-hander deals. Higgins takes a called strike. He thought it was ball four. Instead, he's got to get back in the left-hand batter's box with a full count. See at least one more pitch. Right side of the infield, pushed towards the line. Second base from McGuire, equidistant between the bases. The 3-2 to Higgins, swung on and missed for strike three. Alex Pimentel leads the first inning off with a double. Three straight putouts following. 
And the Rebels set down in four batters, and we're scoreless through an ending of play. Back with a second from early Wilson Stadium. Still no score between UNLV and CBU. Hey fans, with the Contour Sports app from Cox, you can watch a game live and track multiple games at once while they're right there on your TV. The sports app is part of the new Contour from Cox. Hurry to a Cox Solution store or visit cox.com backslash contour to learn more. UNLV Baseball presented by Parkway Tavern, official partner of UNLV Athletics and your official home of Rebels on the road. With over 250 beers, 24-7 gaming, and five Valley locations, there's no better place to catch the game than Parkway Tavern. Matt and Everett back at early Wilson Stadium. Bottom three hitters in the California Baptist lineup due up against Zach Simon, who begins the top of the second with a fastball inside to Josh Pano. Right-handed batting shortstop for the Lancers. Still no score, both sides with one hit in their respective halves of the first inning. Simon gets a called strike on a fastball, clipping the outside in the low 90s. And the count goes even. Simon stranded the bases loaded after a hit and a pair of walks. Rebels had a leadoff double from Alex Pimentel, and then nothing to follow. This one's knocked straight back from Pano. Count goes a ball and two strikes. Matthew Darr, the right fielder on deck. Connor McGuire, the second baseman. Third hitter of the second inning. Still no score. That one way high, sharp. Sticking the glove up at the last moment. Luckily a cross up there. Simon in the first, 88 to 91 on the fastball. Through both the slider and the changeup. Although he threw just the one changeup at 84. Slider in the upper 70s. Nice. Pitch fouled off down the right field side. Pano able to stay alive. The six foot tall sophomore out of Temecula, California. The St. Mary's transfer. He's been starting at shortstop, batting seventh all weekend. Two for eight with a trio of RBIs and three runs scored as well in the week. It's this slider down the third base side. It's fair, rolling into the corner as Pano looks geared for extra bases. Left fielder Sharman goes to scoop it up, settling in with a leadoff double, his seventh two-bagger of the year is Pano. And it's now back-to-back -back innings in which the leadoff man is reached against Zach Simon via a hit. Second hit of the game. It's a Matthew Dar with a runner on second. Still nobody out. Dar has been in the action all weekend, although it's just the first game he started. Came in as a defensive replacement Friday. Pinch hitter yesterday. Squares to butt, pulls it back. Unable to do so. He did offer up on the appeal, says Michael Goebel down the first base side. So Dar trying to push one down the third base side. Comes up empty and it's nothing in one. His limited at bats, he's two for four this weekend. Just five of 16 all season. Baseman Murphy creeping in. Dar doesn't square to butt. Instead, he takes the fastball outside for ball one. In this instance, if you're Dar, you're trying to push something hard down the third base side. You want to make the third baseman make a decision. Dar does bunt it. You'll see Simon hustling towards the third base bag. Dar squares, pulls it back on a pitch up and away. That was the slider for ball two. Sharp came up ready to fire to second. Horvat on the bag, but Sharp putting the ball in the pocket. Pano, 7 of 7 in steal attempts on the year, so he does run well also. That's Myro keeping an eye on him. Dar squares, pulls it back, and takes a fastball nicely spotted on the outside for a called strike. Two balls and two strikes to count. Would be surprised to see Dar square around anymore. Connor McGuire watching on deck. Runner on second, no outs, and a scoreless tie, top of the second inning. The 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed, strike three. Simon challenging Dar with a fastball after a couple of missed bunt attempts. That's a big first out here in the second inning. 
Hunter McGuire rounds out the lineup for the first time through. Second baseman batting ninth. 194 hitter on the year. This is his third start of the weekend. He's hitless and just three at bats. First pitch slider laced out into right field, heading towards the corner is Panaro. Still on the move is the right fielder. He's able to glove it for the out. Tagging from second and advancing to third is Josh Pano. That one with a ton of tail off the bat of the right-hander, forcing Panaro deep into the corner in fair territory. Good advancement. Smart 90 foot move up from Pano. It's the first run of the game, 90 feet away. RBI, let's go. And with two outs, runner on third. It's the top of the lineup once more. Garrett Ostrander makes his second at bat in as many innings. Field deep, Murphy maybe a step towards the line at third. Outfield straight up against Ostrander. Makes a front door curveball, stays inside, started off with the front shoulder of the batter. Quality pitch, geez. Ostrander singled, stole second, and was stranded on third in the first inning. 1-0 pitch, placed into center field, going back is Pimentel. Center fielder turns, has it in his grasp, and makes the catch on the move just in front of the warning track. So for the second straight inning, California Baptist leads it off with the hit, and for the second straight inning, Zach Simon strands at least a runner on. We've played one and a half, still no score. Austin Krizik to lead things off for the Rebels in the bottom of inning number two. Fans, this series sponsor is Intermountain Health, the official health partner of UNLV Athletics. This afternoon, they want to ask you all a simple question. Are you a registered organ donor? You have the power to potentially save a life of someone in need when you become an organ donor. Learn more at intermountainhealthcare.com slash donate life. the second for the Hustlin' Rebels. Designated hitter, number 47, Austin Grizzly. Still no score between UNLV and California Baptist as we enter into the bottom of the second. 5-6-7, due up for the homestanding Hustlin' Rebels. Austin Grizzly to lead things off, followed by Braden Murphy. Paul Myro the fourth, bats third in the second. Max Simon able to strand another runner on in the top of the inning as Grizzly takes a slider from Nate Hemmerling over the inner third for a called strike. Grizzly. Serving as a designated hitter today with Josh Sharman roaming the range defensively in left field. Chris with the batting average down to 281. Takes a bouncing fastball that sneaks past the catcher Carpentier and all the way to the backstop. Chris just two of nine on the weekend with a base hit and a double among those two hits. He swings here, grounds it up the middle. It sneaks by the diving second base from McGuire into shallow center field. Picked up by Dusty Garcia to limit Krizik to a leadoff single. Both teams have now led off each inning so far with at least a base hit. It was a Pimentel double in the first, followed by a Krizik single in the second. Ostrander began the game with a base hit. Josh Pano doubled to lead off the top of the second. Neither team's been able to scratch across any of these leadoff base runners, but as they say, the Ducks have been on the pond. Krizik off first for Braden Murphy. At third base for the first time this year today. Left-handed hitter takes that one down and outside for a ball. UNLV going with a back and forth lineup. The two, four, six, and eight hitters are all left-handed. Everybody else bats right-handed today for Stan Stolte. Murphy leans away from that slider from Hammerling. Two balls and no strikes to count to the number six batter, Braden Murphy. Not too often at the Division I level you get Starting pitching battle of two grad transfers, one of them from the NAIA level in Zach Simon, one from the D3 level in Nate Hemmerling. Nice. Spots a fastball outside, call for strike one. Murphy watching all the way. 
mentioned that Hammerling had played four years at D3 Lakeland University, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Two and two with the 2-4-2 ERA last year. He was a two-way player as well, the starting shortstop for the Muskies. Pick off throw goes to first, Krizik back in safely. He was the starting shortstop and then pitched eight to nine games a year. Shorter seasons at the Division Three level. He batted 317 with five homers, 33 RBIs last year while pitching to the tune of a 2-4-2 ERA. Murphy grounds one the other way, but it's foul. The first hop in fair territory and then took a spin just in front of the base. The third base coach, Kevin Higgins. Now two balls and two strikes to Braden Murphy. Just looking at the numbers for Hemmerling at Lakeland. He batted 386 in 33 games in his junior year in 2021. That included eight home runs and 34 RBIs, both career highs. OPS of over 1,000, all while starting on the staff. Murphy with a little dribbler down the third base side. Hammerling off the mound to grab it. Homer shortstop slings one over to first base in time to retire Murphy. 1-3 on the put out as Krizik advances first to second. No attempt at a play at the base. So with the runner on second, one out. Here's the right-handed swinging shortstop, Paul Myro, the fourth. Myro batting 290 on the year. Leads the club in RBIs with 33. If you would have told him preseason that you have both of those distinctions at this point in the year, he'd be very happy with it. Myro, former Oregon State Beaver, takes a fastball at the letters, called for strike one. Two for six with a pair of walks on the weekend. And one note for Myra was that on Friday night when the Rebels struck out 16 times as a team, a CBU D1 record, Myra the only Rebel to not strike out in that game as a whole. Grounds one to the right side, picked up on the second hop by the second baseman, McGuire. His throw to first is in time. Meanwhile, going from second to third is Krizik. So the leadoff single followed up by a pair of infield ground outs. And out of the game's first run 90 feet away, there are a couple of ground outs. Here's Santino Panaro. Panaro's well rested, coming off an off day yesterday. Single at his first at bat on Friday. Grounded out and struck out elsewhere. One for three in the loss. Takes the overhand curveball, tumbling, but facing a bit high and a little bit off the inside. To the former Bishop Gorman Gale, Santino Panaro. Two outs and the runner on third. Simon even with the bag over at third base. Santino takes up two balls and no strikes the count. 275 hitter. Loved his first collegiate home run earlier in the season right here at Early Wilson. Only homer of the season so far on 14 RBIs. Holds the hands high in the stance from the left-hand batter's box. He swings, drives one to right field. This one's got a chance. Back goes Dar. He turns around. This one's out of here. Santino Panaro with his second home run of the season and of his career gives the Rebels a 2 to nothing lead in the second inning. Intermountain Health. Intermountain Health and UNLV Athletics better together. A line drive screamer to right from Santino Panaro that gets the scoring started. He got all of that one. Santino, a definite line drive hitter, showing it off in spades there. RBI's number 15 and 16 on the year form as well. What do you know, Sam Marone shows up and Santino goes yard. Number nine hitter Gianni Horvat stands in from the right. Takes a first pitch fastball right down the middle for a called strike one. Santino and the Rebels on the board with Gianni batting behind him. Horvat, the second baseman, Trying to get his average up over the Mendoza line today. Hitting a 197 clip so far. Takes a call ball one upstairs. Santino with seven RBIs, three doubles among his 13 hits on the year. 12-6 breaking ball. Tumbles over the outside for a called strike two. Gianni Horvat came in as a defensive replacement for Murphy in the ninth and the tenth innings last night. Gotten that bat in the 10th inning and struck out. Rolls one over to the left side. Charging is the shortstop, Pano. They're off the back foot. Right to the chest of the first baseman, Skipworth, to retire the side. But not before the damage done. Santino Panaro with a two-run jack to right field. On a line drive, they clear the fence in a hurry. And after two innings full, thanks to Panaro, it's now UNLV 2, California Baptist nothing.
All right, fans, it's time for Rebel Baseball Trivia. So take a look at the video board for today's question. The question is, when did UNLV face California Baptist for the first time in program history? If you think you know the answer, head over to the marketing table and submit your answer. Later in the game, one lucky fan who submits the correct answer will be picked as today's winner. Good luck. Catcher number five, Michael Carpentier. Top of the third inning from early Wilson Stadium, and the Rebels jumping out to a two to nothing lead on a Santino Panaro line drive home run over the fence and right, giving Zach Simon a lead. Simon dealing to Michael Carpentier, followed by Mitchell Simon and Dusty Garcia, part of the CBU lineup to lead things off here in the third. Simon pitching with the lead, gets a ground ball on the first pitch. Picked up by the shortstop Myro on the second off. He sets the feet, slings one across the diamond in time. Kate Higgins over at first. Carpentier now 0 for 2. One pitch, one out. So far, so good for Zach Simon through two and now one-thirds innings. Mitchell Simon popped out down the third base side back in the first inning. Stands in now with one out, nobody on. Two to nothing game here in the third. 46 pitch of the game is cut on and missed for Zach Simon by... Mitchell Simon, battle of the Simons here in the third. 46 pitches, 26 strikes so far for Simon. And it comes after a 30-pitch first inning. Really honed things in in a 14-pitch second. This is away with the breaking ball, and the count goes even. Simon pitching with a bit of tempo here in the third. Missing low with a fastball. Two balls and a strike now to Simon, who was all out of sorts against Jack Selinger in the eighth inning when he faced off against him the first time. He got the better of him in the tenth. Breaking ball over the inner third for a call strike two to even the count. Selinger threw two and two thirds innings yesterday in the Simon RBI single. The only run on the only hit allowed by the left hander. Simon chops it to third. Backhand snag by Braden Murphy. Long throw from across the infield is in time to beat out Simon at first base. Great play there by Murphy. It was not played at third base yet this season. Able to get to the backhand, pick it up on a short hop. Fire a strike across the diamond in time. Two up, two down on a couple of ground outs. Make it five straight hitters set down since the Josh Pano leadoff single in the second. Nobody on ahead of Dusty Garcia. Garcia, the center fielder today, walked back in the first. Jane Jett missing off the outside for ball one. Garcia and the on-deck batter Skipworth both walked. Or both stranded on when Cole Howarth fly out to straightaway center. Foul ball straight back into the mid. Quickly one ball, one strike to Garcia. He's homered and doubled this week, otherwise is hitless. Diamond misses just low in the count, two balls and one strike now to the center fielder. And pitch upstairs, three balls and a strike to count. Simon in four years at NAIA Corbin University Two-way player, although his last season only amassed seven at-bats. This is high for ball four. So after a four-pitch walk to Garcia in the first, walks him on five pitches here in the third. Now batting first base and for Simon, who really has not struggled with the walks that much this year as a whole, the three walks today, a new season high. He had walked two against Washington State, two against Arkansas, one against Air Force on April Fool's Day, and one against Grand Canyon in four innings. And that was it so far on the year coming in. First pitch to Skipworth, breaking ball, pitching him backwards over the inside for a called strike one. Skipworth, as mentioned, took a walk behind Garcia in the first inning. Still no at-bats today after one plate appearance. A pitch down, good block by Sharp as the catcher had to slide to the right to keep it from moving to the backstop. I think he picked it on a short hop as well. Skipworth's only hit of the weekend came yesterday in the fourth inning. 
Part of a five run, six hit, nine batter, fourth inning against Noah Beal. Max Simon, who's trying to give the Rebels their first win of the weekend, dots a fastball and the count of ball and two strikes. Rebels will send the top of their lineup up in the home half of the third. Got to get there first. Can't put the cart ahead of the horse in this situation. The one two. Skipworth grounds it softly to second. Gianni Horvat goes the short way. The shortstop Paul Myro covering a 4 6 fielder's choice. Wraps up the scoreless top of the third inning. First inning in which Simon is not allowed a base hit. Through two and a half, the Rebels do up next lead two to nothing. Hey, Rebels fans, season tickets for the 2023-24 season for both men's and women's basketball are now on sale. Be sure to renew yours today or get new season tickets starting at just $115 for your running Rebels and $75 for your Lady Rebels. For more info, visit unlvtickets.com. the third for UNLV, center fielder, number 22, Alex Pimentel. Two to nothing lead for UNLV as we enter into the bottom of the third inning. Pimentel, Sharman, and Sharp, the top three hitters for UNLV up against Nate Hemmerling. His 32nd pitch of the game is slapped foul down the other side. Line drive out of plate on the right field side from Alex Pimentel, who doubled the lead off the first. Then never advanced past second base. Sharman struck out, Sharp lined out. Higgins struck out behind him. Pimentel started to go around, able to hold up on a breaking ball that skips in the dirt just inside the left-hand batter's box. And Pimentel's got the count even at one. A hammerling, throw 21 strikes out of his 33 pitches so far. So he's been a strike zone filler today, although he misses low to Pimentel. Move the count two and one. Good job on the top of the third inning for Zach Simon and company. Trio of weakly tapped ground outs to second, third, and short. Very uh, democratic inning as far as the outs are concerned. As Pimentel takes outside, three balls and a strike to the center fielder. With Jay Sharman watching and swinging away on deck. Emerling out of the full wide on three and one. Pimentel takes way down for ball four. Pimentel, who's been at the top of the lineup each of the last two days, works his first walk of the weekend, and big insurance runner on. Pimentel's got great wheels. Jay Sharman trying to put the ball in play here. Sharman trying to take advantage of the opportunity this weekend. Again, Ryan Charles out with an illness today. Sharman starting his second straight game in his sixth game of the year. Starts off at bat number two, taking a fastball inside for ball one. Charmin, of course, one of two Charmins on the roster. Younger brother Josh, still just a junior. Runner goes. Charmin swings and fouls it straight back. So, of course, to head back to the base at first is Alex Pimentel. Both Charmin brothers attending Desert Oasis High School. Jay looking to bring up his career average. Turning into the day, a 255 hitter. This is his fifth and final year of collegiate baseball. Pimentel doesn't go. Sharman swings and misses at a slider, breaking in towards him. And the count goes a ball and two strikes to the left fielder. Sharman played in more games in his freshman year in 2019 than he has in any other season so far. 48 at bats. Swings and misses here for strike three. Able to tip it into the mitt for the second time. Down on K's for the second time goes Sharman. That's strikeout number three for Hemmerling. That'll bring up Jacob Sharp with one out and one on. Sharp a more than welcome addition to the roster this year. The veteran leadership of Eric Bajani graduating. Jacob Sharp has filled in nicely and then some. 
Spot, it's a curveball by sectoring home plate at half for a called strike one. Sharp had a line drive to right field on the first pitch he saw back in the first inning. So already deeper in his second plate appearance here. Fullerton Junior College transfer. Playing in his third year of college ball. A Whittier, California native takes a swing and lines one over the head of the shortstop into left center for a base hit. Rounding second, zooming to third is Pimentel. It goes straight to the bag from the left fielder Ostrander. That's a base hit from Sharp, his second of the week, his 44th of the year. And a good job by Pimentel, reading that one off the bat. He was never thinking about stopping at second. That'll put runners in the corners with one out for Kate Higgins, who struck out on the first. That's par for the course for Jacob Sharp, batted 313 in his second and final year at Fullerton Junior College. And batted 344 for the Ridgefield Raptors in the West Coast College Summer League. So he came into the season swinging a hot stick. First pitch to Higgins is outside. Cade Higgins playing in his first season for his hometown school after two years at Arizona State. Former Spring Valley Grizzlies stands 6-2, tips the scales at 210. Swings over a tailing fastball moving away from him. And the count goes even at a ball and a strike. Higgins played sparingly his two seasons at Arizona State. Dealt with a lot of injuries last year. Played in nine games, mostly as a defensive replacement for the Sun Devils. That fastball located just off the outside of the plate. Higgins has a 2-1 count against him. Played in 34 games in his freshman year. 52 at-bats and a 250 average with a home run and five RBIs. That was back in 2021. Wings over another fastball. The count goes even at two to Higgins. Sharp off first. Alex Pimentel off third. Two to nothing the lead here in the bottom of the third inning. Santino Pinar with a two-run home run. That's been the difference thus far. From the stretch, Hemmerling deals. Higgins takes a fastball that bounces. Good blocked by the catcher Carpentier. And now the count goes full. Decision time if you're... Cade's dad, Kevin, in the third base coaching box. Do you get Sharp on the move off first base? He's held on by Skipworth. There's a big gap on the right side of the infield. 3-2 pitch. Here we go. Runner stays. It's called ball four high. Higgins thought he had taken ball four in his previous plate appearance. Does work the walk here. This one's a big one as it loads the bases with one out and Austin Krizik standing in. We'll have a mound visit as a right-hander begins to get loose down the left field side for California Baptist. Lancers may have to dip into their bullpen a bit earlier than they had thought. Starting pitching had been good all week, but Emmerling's going to be bounced after two and a third. Not an enviable position. The right-hander that's coming in to try to put out a fire. With the bases loaded and one out in what is already a two to nothing game with UNLV on top. Trying to get an ID here on the right hander jogging in, wearing number 30. That's Drew Nicochet. So Nicochet will take over for Hemmerling. This will step aside. Bases loaded, one out here in the bottom of the third inning. Austin Krizik due up next.
right-hander Drew Nicoche on to throw the big bodied right-hander at six foot five, 215 pounds, the senior out of Temecula, California. In with the sacks full and one out here in the bottom of the third. UNLV on top with a two to nothing lead thanks to a Santino Panaro two run home run in the second. Austin Krizik, a great batting position here. He's got Alex Pimentel off third, Jacob Sharp off second, Kate Higgins off of first. Higgins worked a walk on a full count to bounce the starter Hemmerling from the game. His line very much partial at this point. First pitch out of the pen is cut on and missed as Krizik offered up at a slider that started out at the front hip. Kriz singled in the second, base hit up the middle, it rolled through the infield and scored with two outs on the Panaro blast. Here's the 0-1 from Nikoshe. Popped up right side and out of play and quickly behind nothing and two is Austin Krizik. Nikoshe spelled N-E-C-O-C-H-E-A. Enters into the day with a one and one record. Has a save as well in 24 and two thirds innings. <laughs> Big right-hander deals on 0-2. Right-handed batter Austin Krizik takes outside. Nicochet's made 18 outings, four of them spot starts. 16 strikeouts to 10 walks in 24 and two thirds innings. Opponents batting 381 against him. Three home runs allowed as well. As Krizik lines this one down the right field side, it's fair. That looks like it'll clear the bases. Rounding third heading to the plate is Sharp. Higgins gets the wave around third. The throw from the right fielder, Dar is cut off and not in time. Sliding in feet first and safely with a one out bases clearing triple is Austin Krizik and the lead crack wide open at five to nothing. Off the bat, you knew that would score at least two. Higgins on the same page. This is Dad Kevin waving him around third almost immediately. And that's a three RBI, three bagger for Krizik, who's now two for two. All three of those runs charged to the starter Hemmerling as well. And the line for Nikoshe starts with Krizik on third as Braden Murphy swings to the first pitch, but pulls it well fouled on the first baseline. Hammerling's going to finish charge for all five of these runs. Left on the hook for the loss as it was in the deficit. Grown greater with three inherited runners all scoring on one swing by Austin Krizik. Infield drawn in. Here's the 0-1 to Murphy. Check swing on a slider in the dirt. Carpentier, the catcher, sliding to the right to keep it in front. Krizik now with 27 RBIs on the season. Those three, his first of the weekend, has to feel good for a batter that's been struggling by his own standards. Murphy swings and misses. Count goes to a ball and two strikes to the left-handed swinging third baseman. Grounded out back to the starter, Hemmerling. Pitcher made a nice athletic play to spring off the mound and throw out Murphy, who's got about average wheels. Infield still drawn in with a 1-2 count upcoming. Outfield drawn shallow as well. Here's the pitch. In the dirt, did he go? No, heading from third is Krizik. He'll score standing up as that one took a major kick away from Carpentier. Score that one a wild pitch, advancing Krizik from third to the plate. The run charged to Nikoshe. It's now a six to zero lead with four runs all scoring in quick succession here in the third. So now all of a sudden the base is empty with one out. Four runs across in the inning. Nicochet back to the full windup. It's a pop fly to the left side off the bat of Murphy. Third baseman Simon heads to the boundary. They'll run out of room as it skips into the bullpen. That is active for the Lancers down the third baseline. Left-hander warming up. Counts all square at two to Braden Murphy. Here's the pitch from Nicochet. Grounded softly to the left side, charging is the shortstop Pano. Grabs and throws off the back foot in time to retire Murphy, who's now 0 for 2. Scored as the second out of the third inning. On a 6-3 ground out from Murph. That brings up the seventh batter of the third inning. And the seventh batter of the lineup as well in Paul Myro. First pitch to the right-handed batting shortstop. Slap straight back. Foul ball pushes the count to nothing in one. Myro. Grounded into the second out of the second inning when he chopped out to second base. Right before the Panaro two-run home run. 
Slider that started out at the front shoulder, cuts inside, but misses for a called ball one to Paul Myro the fourth. Younger brother Gunner joining the fold next year. Myro's got another year of eligibility as well. Two will play together in 2024. Another slider inside. Drew Nicochet with the bright turquoise glove missing for a called ball two. He threw two and a third scoreless against UC Riverside on Tuesday. Last games for California Baptist before coming to Vegas. That pitch down and out, and it's a three ball, one strike count to Myro with Panaro looming large in the on deck circle. Nicochet out of the full wide on three and one. This is outside. Oh, we're close as Myro walks on five pitches. So since Nicochet has come in, he's allowed a bases clearing, three RBI triple. A ground out and now a walk. Tino Panaro on with a runner on. And two down, four across here in the third. Line now final on the starter, Hemmerling. Five runs on four hits with a couple of walks. He struck out three over two and a third. He is the pitcher of record for the Lancers. So here's Panaro. Runner goes in the first pitch. It gets by the catcher, Carpentier. And deeped at second was Myro as he slides in head first and safely. His second steal and four opportunities on the year. <laughs> Mentioned that the Panaro home run in the second was a line drive screamer that cleared the fence. Exited the bat at 105 miles an hour. Traveled 392 feet, 22 degree launch angle. Takes outside. If you know anything about launch angles that typically end up in home runs, 22 degrees is on the way low end of the scale. Typically, you're looking for something between 20 and 30 degrees to clear the fence, especially with the high wall here at early Wilson Stadium. Panaro takes a bouncing fastball, and after a five-pitch walk and a stolen base, Panaro now up three balls to no strikes with Gianni Horvat on deck. Short snap, Pano keeping an eye on the base runner. As Nicochet deals on 3-0. and oh. Spots a fastball down and outside for a called strike one. Pinaro still in a good hitter's count. Looking for something up and inside like he pulled over the fence in the second. Zach Simon just got a little bit more run support. As Pinaro swings and grounds this one up the middle. Pato the shortstop stays low to the ground. Makes the grab and the throw all in time to retire the side. Pinaro grounds out to end the inning. But UNLV does major damage scoring four runs including three on one swing. And Austin Krizik RBI triple has cracked this game wide open and through three innings full, it's UNLV on top of California Baptist, six to nothing. Head coach Barry Odom and your UNLV Rebel football team at Allegiant Stadium with, with season tickets this fall. Season tickets include all six home games, which include a non-conference showdown against Vanderbilt and the Ninth Island showdown against Hawaii. Visit UNLVtickets.com or call 702-739-FANS to get your season tickets today. Designated hitter number 12, Cole Howard. Cole Howard to lead off in the top of the fourth inning. Big body DH swings to the first pitch, thrown in there by Zach Simon. Simon pitching with an even bigger lead in the fourth than he entered the third with. After scoring two on one swing in the second, Rebels plating four runs on just two hits in the third. As Howard rolls it up the middle, past the diving shortstop Myro into center field. And Howard with his third hit of the weekend, now one of two on the day. It's the third leadoff base hit out of four innings so far, thrown by Zach Simon, although he's been able to mitigate the damage. He's got at least one base runner in every inning, and has stranded everybody. California Baptist leaving five runners on through the first three innings of play. Howard on with another leadoff base hit, brings up Josh Pato, who began the second with a double. 
out of the stretch. Simon deals inside, Sharp ready to throw down to first, but back in was Howard, who's 0 for 1 in steal attempts on the year. Pena with his seventh double of the year back in his second inning. Slick fielding shortstop, swings the stick pretty well also. Fouls this one out of play down the right field side. Pena, the Temecula, California native. Our game here at early Wilson Stadium. Just one of many around the Mountain West Conference today, although it's the only one not between Mountain West foes. Sliders chopped foul down the third base side. Pano behind one and two. After getting rained out at the academy yesterday, Air Force hosting New Mexico in a twin bill today. It was all Lobos in the early game. A 12 to one drubbing for New Mexico over Air Force. Second game just about underway from Colorado Springs. Fastball spotted down and outside. Two and two, the count to Pano. Just about underway in Fresno as well. It's the Bulldogs defeated San Jose State twice yesterday. Swept both games of a doubleheader. Going for the series sweep this afternoon. Ground ball to second. This could be two. Horvat to Myro at the bag. Myro's throw to Higgins is in time. And a leadoff single wiped out by a 4-6-3 twin killing. First of the day for the Rebels. And that'll bring up Matthew Dar with two outs. All of a sudden, nobody on in a 6 nothing game. Just about underway as well in San Diego State, hosting Nevada. The final game of that three-game series. Shane Simpson pinch hitting for Matthew Dar. Dar, the first casualty of the bench as Gary Adcock goes to Simpson to pinch hit. Simpson's been in and out of the lineup realistically all weekend. Left-handed batting, Simpson stands in. Nobody on ahead of him. I'm called by the plate. Sharp looks to adjust some of the gear. Simpson, a big body, six foot four, 228 pound junior out of El Toro High School in Lake Forest, California. Vegas native Zach Simon deals low out of the full windup and misses. Simpson came in as a pinch hitter yesterday, doubled home a pair of runs and was lifted. There's a good chance we don't see Simpson in the outfield. Pitch outside, maybe a bit low. Two balls, no strikes from Simon to Simpson. Pinch hitting for Dar, who struck out. Simpson was in the starting lineup on Friday. So rounds this one to the first base side, picked up by Kate Higgins. He won the foot race to the bag himself. So after a leadoff single, all of a sudden a 1-2-3 inning, including a double play and an inning-ending ground out and a pinch hit at bat. On to the bottom of the fourth we go. UNLV all over California Baptist on a Sunday. 6 to nothing to score. Rebels fans, your UNLV Hustlin' Rebels will be back at home on Friday, May the 5th, for this series against New Mexico. First pitch is set for 6.05. It'll be the first of a three-game series. Get your tickets by visiting unlvrebels.com slash LVB. We hope to see you there. Second baseman, number three, Gianni Horvath. Nine one two. First three batters of the bottom of the fourth inning for UNLV. This is Gianni Horvath squares to bunt and yanks it back on a slider up by the eye line. Gianni to lead things off, followed by Alex Pimentel and Jason Sharman. UNLV on top, six to nothing on the strength of five hits. Drew Nicochet pitching in his second inning of work out of the CBU bullpen. Gets a called strike on a fastball dealt outside at Gianni Horvat. Gianni grounded out to short on a weak roller to end the two-run second inning. Nicochet gets a foul ball, tips straight back. Gianni clears the screen and moves the count to a ball and two strikes. Horvat. Need at least a couple of hits today to get his batting average up over 200 on the year. 
choked up on the bat from the right side as Nicochet deals. A slider that's hit in the air to straightaway center. Anfila steps back for Dusty Garcia as the center fielder right in front of the batter's eye. Makes the catch just off to the left for out number one. Shane Simpson, meanwhile, staying in the game at right field. So, remember yesterday, he pinch hit at a two RBI double and was lifted before the team went out on defense. He's getting a defensive out. Remember, he DH'd on Friday as well, so this is the first inning for Simpson defensively on the weekend. Everybody else still the same defensively. We're back at the top of the lineup for Alex Pimentel. Swings and fouls the first pitch. Breaking ball back into the mid for strike one. Pimentel with his thumbprints all over this game already. Let off the bottom of the first with a two-bagger. Walked and scored the first of the four runs in the third inning. Breakout frame for the Rebels. That slider backs him away. In the lower 80s. It's a ball and a strike. For Nicochet. Fastball 92 to 94. He's thrown that slider in the upper 70s. There's the low 90s fastball. Misses way outside. Came across his body for ball two. Pimentel with three hits on the weekend. He's got 40 on the year. Waves and misses at a slider. He was way early for strike two. Two balls, two strikes. One out, nobody on in the bottom of the fourth inning for Alex Pimentel. Rebels trying to stave off a sweep after dropping the first two games of the set. There's another slider cut on and missed for strike three. First strikeout for Nicochet on the day. It's down out number two here in the fourth inning for Nicochet. That's Ponchato number 17 on the year. That'll bring up Jay Sharman with nobody on ahead of him in two outs. Sharman's just trying to put a ball in play here. He struck out twice so far today. Backs away from that first pitch. Heater in on the kneecaps. Zach Simon able to get through four innings so far, allowing nothing on three hits. He's walked three a new season high. But other than that, really spreading out the base runners. Change up outside. Two balls, no strikes to Jay Sharman. The CBU's had a base runner on in every inning. Case in point, the fourth inning where the leadoff hitter reached on a single. Two batters later, the inning was over on a double play and a ground down. 3-0 count now to Jay with Jacob Sharp on deck. Charmin likely watching all the way, although we've seen a handful of green lights on 3-0 this weekend. Charmin's got the red light, and he takes a fastball on the black of the outside of the plate for a called strike one. Still in a good spot is the left fielder. Slightly open stance from the left side. He's looking to gear up on something. Instead, it hits him. That pitch got him on the hip. As Jay Sharman will take first base for the first time today. That brings up Jacob Sharp with two outs. Sharp's put the ball in, play, in place twice so far today. Sharply stung line drive out to right field on the first pitch he saw back in the first inning. And singled and scored in the third. Base hit over the head of the shortstop. Taking all the way here as that pitch goes way outside. Good block by Carpentier to keep Sharman at first base. When he was on base yesterday, which he was three times in four plate appearances. Sharman was a pest on the base pass. Big secondary leads all the way around. Slider off the outside for ball two. Sharp in your premier hitters count at 2-0. Your hitters count, typically you'll think of 2-0 and 3-1. Well, in today's day and age, sometimes that can be shifted later in the at-bats. Sharp grounds one to the left side. Backhand grab by the shortstop. Pato, a long throw off the back foot. What a pick at first by Skipworth. Big time play by Pano to stop the bottom of the fourth inning. Credit to Skipworth as well on the other side. Rebels go without a hit for the first time, but they do strand a runner on as they go scoreless for the first time since the first inning, but they'll take it, leading six to nothing through four innings of play. Back with more from Early Wilson. Behind the teams, generating critical resources to support all UNLV student athletes. Learn more about how you can help graduate leaders, win championships, and help our student athletes excel at all that they do by visiting rebelathleticfund.com.
Austin Rebel Baseball brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, here to be a part of your Las Vegas life. More importantly, here to help you live an even healthier one. Intermountain Healthcare, the official health partner of UNLV Athletics. Matt and Everett from early Wilson Stadium as we enter into the top of the fifth. UNLV, so far so good in the final game of three, leading six to nothing over California Baptist. Out scoreless in the bottom of the fourth inning, Zach Simon back out for the fifth. First out he records will make it his new longest outing of the year. Squaring the bunt on the first pitch of the fifth is Connor McGuire. Right-handed batting second baseman pulls it back on a fastball in there for strike one. Simon has spread out four hits and three walks. This is away with the slider to move the count even. But he's done a great job of wiggling his way out of a jam. He stranded five base runners on through three innings. Nobody left on in the fourth. He'll miss up here with a fastball to move it to two and one. And as mentioned, the season long for Simon was four innings. Bullpen dead silent down the right field line as of now. McGuire swings and misses. Simon doing well to pull the string on a change up there. The count goes even at twos. Second baseman McGuire followed by the leadoff man Ostrander and then the catcher Carpentier. The 2-2. Swung on and popped foul out of play on the right field side. So we get to try that one again. Connor McGuire 0 for 1 with a fly out deep to right field. Comes with Josh Pano on second base and sent Santino Panaro scurrying towards the corner to record the putout. After the foul ball, another 2-2 pitch put in play through the right side of the infield for a base hit. That's the fourth leadoff hit allowed by Zach Simon now through five innings. As mentioned, he's done a good job of limiting damage at this point to nothing. It's the fourth hit of the game for California Baptist. No runs on four hits, no errors either way. UNLV with six runs on just five hits. Back to the top of the lineup. Here's Garrett Ostrander, the leadoff hitter. Blyer stays at first. First pitch swinging is Ostrander. A pop-up foul and out of play on the right field side. Big Scott Jones behind home plate will make the flip to Simon with the new ball. Ostrander has singled. Let's go, Jay. Well, second one, he singled back in the first inning and then flying out to straightaway center to end the scoreless second inning. Falls away from this pitch, bounces it up the middle. Horvat with the diving stop. He can't get it out of the glove. Everybody's safe. But what a play from Gianni just to get there. That one took a full sprint and a full dive layout just to stop it. That's the very definition of an extraordinary effort. So McGuire safe at second. That would have been the only chance for a put out. For Horvat and Myro up the middle. Gianni did a great job just to stop it, but unable to get it out of the glove. So it's an infield base hit. And one of the pinch hitter for Carpentiers, Josiah Chavez, steps in for the first time. And as a catcher, will likely see him the rest of the way out defensively. Chavez pinch hitting here in the fifth. Two on and nobody out. Right off the bench. And aggressive mentality. He swings and misses at a first pitch fastball off the inside from Simon. Chavez has started 23 games out of 37 appearances, batting 247 on the year. Takes a heater for a ball. Home run in 13 RBIs. He's got five doubles. His only extra base hits out of 23 on the year. Carpentier, who has started every game so far, lifted after going 0 for 2. 1 1. Nicely spotted. That fastball down and away. It's what they call a pitcher's pitch. No chance for Chavez to lean down and knock that one. Chavez wears number 11, the Santa Paula, California native. Six foot three, 192 pound sophomore. One, two from Zach Simon. No deal from the stretch. Ground ball to second. This could be two again. Horvat to Myro. Myro to first. Pulls Higgins off the bag. So Ostrander retired four to six. Myro's throw just a little bit wide. Chavez grounds into a fielder's choice, advancing McGuire from second to third. With two outs in the inning. Rather, just one out in the inning. Chavez on first, McGuire on third. Here's Mitchell Simon. Simon looking for another ground ball here. Mitchell Simon in the plate has grounded out and flied out. That first pitch fastball right down the chute for a called strike one. Simon popped out to Murphy. Foul ground just in front of third base back in the first. Grounded out to him. 
Took a nice backhand short hop pick by Murphy in the third. A one offering way upstairs. Sharp had to spring up out of the squat to keep that one in front. Let's go, Mitch. Simon, who leads the WAC with 14 home runs, also leads the team with 42 runs batted in. That's among the top in the conference as well. Takes a slider outside from Simon for ball two. There's definitely some bodies and movement in the UNLV bullpen. Doesn't look, though, as if anyone is throwing as of now. Simon set. Right-hander's pitch, grounded to short. Myro fields, gives to Horvat. Horvat's turn and throw to the base is there this time. And it's a 6-4-3 double play. Second double play that UNLV has turned in the game. Simon wiggling his way out of a jam in each of his five innings. A new season long for the right-hander, and he's held the California Baptist Lancers scoreless through five at-bats. Bottom of the fifth when we return. Kate Higgins to lead it off with UNLV on top, six to nothing. It features real-time news alerts, schedules, exclusive content, ticket integration, game day details, and more. The UNLV Rebels mobile app is free, and it's compatible with both iOS and Android devices, so go download it today. Brandon Ross. And leading off the fifth for UNLV, first baseman, number 14, Cade Higgins. For the second time in as many days, Brandon Ross takes over atop the mound for California Baptist. The Hawaii transfer, stands six foot two, 170 pounds, left hander will face off against Cade Higgins, the left handed batter, to lead off the inning. UNLV on top, six to nothing as we get going with the bottom of inning number five. Austin Grizzick to follow, and then another lefty in Braden Murphy bats third in the inning. Ross, with the bright turquoise glove, gives up a foul ball straight back by Kate Higgins. Now nothing in one in the third plate appearance of the day for the first baseman. Zach Simon gets out of yet another jam in the top of the fifth. That's been the story of the afternoon. Higgins swings and misses at a curveball to go down 0-2. Simon gave up back-to-back -back base hits to lead off the fifth inning. And then got two straight ground balls, first one Unable to be turned into a double play with the catcher Josiah Chavez pinch hitting. Still in the game behind the plate. You're watching as Higgins hammers this one straight away right center field. Back goes Garcia. He's at the track. Center fielder can't find it. It takes a bounce on the warning track and skips over the fence for an automatic ground rule double. Unfortunate bounce in a sense for Higgins because he was already rounding second when that thing took the big bunny hop over the 400 foot marker. Garcia lost it in the sun. It's a high sky with some clouds up straight above, but really nothing to protect against the sun. He had the glasses, he had the glove covering the eyes, and at the last moment, just kind of turned and covered the head. Didn't want to get knocked by that double by Higgins. That's his sixth double of the year. And brings up Austin Krizik. Is again from the right side. It's the first pitch of the at-bat. Called for a strike. There is two for two so far. It's tripled and singled. Scored twice today. Bouncing ball gets past the catcher Chavez and all the way to the backstop. Higgins moves from second to third on another wild pitch. 
a third of the game for now three different CBU pitchers. Ross came in yesterday just to face off against Kate Higgins. Got him to ground out in the seventh. Gives up a double. Came off the bat at 98 today. Took a bounce over the center field fence in a hurry. Grizzik takes inside, and the count goes three balls, no strikes, to the slugging designated hitter. Batted with the bases loaded against Drew Nicochet. Triple down the right field line. His first triple of the season. Infield drawn in as Ross deals on 3-0. and A swing and a foul ball straight back off the mask of the catcher. Grizzik, one of a couple of players, who's earned the green light over his now four years with the program. Everyone curveball upstairs for ball four. Third time on base today in three plate appearances for Austin Krizik, turning the tide of his midseason batting woes. He's at first. Higgins stays at third. Brings up Brandon Murphy. Two on and nobody out. Mentioned that Ross faced just one batter yesterday. It's typically what he'll do. He's made 15 outings, including a spot start coming into the day. He's pitched just 11 innings. Murphy almost jumps out of his shoes thinking about that one, but takes the fastball high. Ross is 1-0 with a 5-7-3 ERA. He struck out 13 and walked 12 in 11 innings. Although opponents batting is 205 against the tricky left-hander. Murphy hammers this one to right center field. Over into the gap is Shane Simpson. He dives, and the right fielder makes the catch for the out. But tagging at third, smartly advancing to the plate is Kate Higgins. That'll go in the book as a sacrifice fly to right, but slap an exclamation point next to that one because that was a heck of a catch by Simpson for the out. But the RBI for Murphy is his 13th of the year as Higgins scores from third. Staying at first is Austin Krizik. Great grab by Simpson. That ball had a ton of topspin on it. Coming straight down as big bodied outfielder able to make the grab for, for out number one here in the fifth. Seven to nothing lead for UNLV. Extra point good, if you will, on the Murphy sack fly. Paul Myro, the fourth, takes a called ball one upstairs. Myro over one with a walk and a stolen base. He also grounds it out to second in the second inning. Grizzik off first with one out. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Myro thought about it, checks the swing anyway, but it's a called strike at the letters. My big Scott Jones behind home plate. Higgins and Krizik have each scored two runs today. Five RBIs between Krizik and Panaro alone. Myro takes out. The ball and a strike the count to the right-handed batting shortstop, Paul Myro. Center fielder Garcia takes a couple of steps towards the gap in right center. Playing Myro just a bit to go the other way. Instead, this pitch off the glove of the catcher, Chavez, not rolling away far enough for an advancement from Krizik. Now, Myro in a good hitter's count at 3 and 1. Ross has been all around the strike zone, but has missed more often than he's hit it thus far. Skipworth holds on at first. Here's the 3 1 to Myro. Check swing on a fastball high, called for ball four. It's the second walk of the inning. And the fifth walk of the day taken by UNLV batters. Both runners on base now. Issued free passes by Ross. With the right hander up in the bullpen. This may be the le last left handed batter that he's left in to face. Tino Panaro, who homered off the starter Hemmerling earlier, and grounded out against Nekeshe in the third. And Tino swings and dribbles a foul ball straight back. That one will roll to the screen for strike one to Tino. Panaro. Played almost every game since coming to campus last year out of Bishop Gorman. It's that bouncing pitch for a called ball two. Another hitter in a good hitter's count at two balls and no strikes. Panaro burst onto the scene in a major way. Number one outfield prospect in the class of 2021 in the state of Nevada. Had at 346 a year ago. He takes high and it's a three ball, one strike count. You know, hit 346, no home runs, but 27 batted in, mostly at the bottom of the lineup. 
Started 39 out of 46 games in which he played. Ross picks the leg, turns to second, a very delayed throw with Krizik already standing on the base at second. Krizov first, Myro rather off first, Krizov second. Both put on via the free pass from Brandon Ross. The left-hander deals. That's a curveball up, and now it's a 3-1 count to Panaro. Tino, after batting 346 in his freshman year, played for the Orange County Riptide in the California Collegiate League in the summer, batted 333, so kept the hitting prowess up in summer ball. Came into today hitting 275. He takes outside for ball four. Third walk of the inning from Ross. And the bases are loaded, all put on via the walk. Chris to third, Myro to second. Panaro reaches first, and now with a right-hander due up, Gianni Horvat, the next hitter, will get a right-hander out of the California Baptist bullpen. So Ross brought in it for the fifth. Gives up a double, a walk, a sack fly, and then back-to-back -back walks. He's given up a run on a hit. All three runners on base. The responsibility of the left-hander, Brandon Ross, as a right-hander comes in from the bullpen. Get you the name and the numbers when we come back. Step aside for the pitching change here at Early Wilson Stadium. Taking the mound for California Baptist, number 36, Brandon Downer. And now at the plate for UNLV, number three, Gianni Horvath. For the second time in the series, Brandon Downer comes out of the California Baptist bullpen. He threw two and two thirds innings in the nine to two Lancer win on Friday night. Facing off against Gianni Horvat with the bases loaded. First pitch swinging is the Rebels' second baseman. Foul ball poked into the seats on the right field side. Moves the count, nothing in one. Seven to nothing lead for UNLV. With one run scored so far on one hit here in the fifth. Brandon Ross responsible for all three runners on. Rizek on third, Meyer on second, Tino Panaro on first. As Gianni rolls this one to short, grabbed by Pano. Pano's feed to the bag is in time. McGuire's throw to first, not there in time. Panaro beats it out and puts another run on the board as Krizik scores. Eight to nothing the lead for UNLV. 22, Alex Pimentel. Myro safe at third. Panaro retired 6-4 up the middle. Sormat reaches. Runners on the corners as Alex Pimentel bats the seventh hitter of the fifth inning. Horvat will always give you a hard 90, that's for sure. Bearing down the line, just able to beat out the throw from the second baseman, McGuire, on the fielder's choice. Line drive, shot down the right field side. Now to play from Pimentel, who's behind nothing in one. That run charged to Brandon Ross. He has allowed two runs so far on one hit and three walks. Count is one and one after an auto ball. Looks like it was called on downer. Second pitch of the at bat moves it to two and one. So that slider was upstairs. Downer at six foot five, 215 pounds. Sophomore right-hander out of Corona, California. Said it throughout the rest of the series. 
Come on, Blue. Partner Dan Dolby pointing out that this is more of a, a football roster in terms of the size overall across the board for CBU. The six foot five right hander misses up. And Pimentel way ahead in the count. He's doubled, walked, scored a run when he walked in the third, and then struck out in the fourth inning against Drew Nekashe. A long pause here. Pimentel ready to go in the base. Home plate umpire Scott Jones writing something down. Horvat back off of first base. For now, the count two and one to Pimentel. That one grounded through the right side of the infield for a base hit. Horvat holds up at second as is picked up by the right fielder Simpson. Second hit of the inning is the second hit of the day for Pimentel. And with Horvat on second, Myro scoring to make it a 9 to nothing game. That will close the line on Brandon Ross. RBI and a base hit for Pimentel. Stands the lead in 9 with a unique lineup today. Rebels getting the bats rolling. Two on. Two down as the first pitch is inside, backing Jay Sharman away on the fastball. Sharman's the eighth hitter of the inning. So far, three runs have scored on two hits and three walks. Nine to nothing advantage for UNLV as Sharman hacks and comes up empty. A lot of changeup that Downer pulled the string on. Downer, as I mentioned, finished out the last two and two thirds innings of the game on Friday night. A lot of run on two hits, both of those in the ninth inning. Rebels with a late comeback bid that fell short. Sharman takes up and the count, two balls and a strike. That game didn't feature any pinch hitters for UNLV. Downer struck out three, including Charles, Krizik, and Edarian Williams. Two of the three not in the lineup today. It's behind two and one to Jay Sharman. Takes that fastball low and inside, and Downer falls behind three and one. Go Brandon. Going into the same trap as Brandon Ross getting into a lot of three balls counts early. Ross charged for all three runs so far here in the fifth. Garmin takes an overhand breaking pitch through the outer part of the zone for a call strike two. And now the count goes full. We'll see Horvat off second, Pimentel off first, both break with the pitch. Back from the left is Sharman. Downer set atop the mound on the right. The runners go, the 3-2 payoff pitch. Poked down the left field side. Foul and drifting out of play. Not without a great effort from third baseman Mitchell Simon. Gave it a slide, but had to check himself short in front of that fence in front of the left field bullpen. So both runners return to their bases. Back in the box is Sharman. 0 for 2 with the walk so far is the left fielder. Here we go again. The carousel rolls as the runners take off. Sharman grounds one through the right side of the infield for a base hit. Rounding third and scoring with ease is Gianni Horvat as the throw goes to second. Back-to-back -back RBI hits from Pimentel and Sharman. And it's now a 10 to nothing lead for UNLV here in the fifth inning. Now batting the catcher, number five. Such a high-energy player, Jason Sharman, coming through in a big situation there. That'll extend the lead to 10. It looks like it'll bounce downer from the game. So talking about the carousel with the base runners, there's a carousel coming in and out of the bullpen down the left field side, not only today, but all weekend for California Baptists. We'll take a break for another pitching change. Rebels striking in a major way in the fourth inning. Think of the fifth inning, four runs on just three hits, including Pimentel and Sharman with back-to-back -back run scoring knocks. And with two outs and a 10 to nothing lead, we'll step aside for the pitching change. Number 41, Jacob Wilson. Moving from right field, moving from center field to right field is number three, Dusty Garcia. And coming into the game to play center field is number 22, Nick Duminell.
So the third pitcher of the bottom of the fifth inning is the third pitcher that's already thrown this weekend is the right-hander Jacob Wilson and of Menifee, California takes over with Jacob Sharp due up. Rebels have played it four runs on just three hits so far in the fifth inning. Sharp batting with Sharman on first, Pimentel on third. Two outs as the ninth batter here in the fifth inning. Wilson misses high and Sharp starts out his fourth at bat in the fifth inning. Ahead one ball, no strikes. Wilson's the third pitcher of the inning. Brandon Ross and Brandon Downer each able to get one out apiece. Ross did it on a sacrifice fly. Downer did it on a fielder's choice. So even the outs have been productive here in the fifth for UNLV. Sharp watching all the way, takes a strike from Wilson. Count even at one. Wilson through yesterday, through two thirds of an inning. Came in in the sixth, got a couple of outs. Keep up a triple from Ryland Charles. Jacob Sharp then had an RBI base hit against Wilson. Another one outside, moves the count two and one to Jacob Sharp, who's one of three today. He's single, lined out, and grounded out. Off of first is Sharman. Pimentel off third. They both reached an RBI base hits. Sharp rips one foul on the third base side. Nearly some friendly fires. Pimentel had to duck the head out of the way. That's why you're taught to lead off in foul ground and then come back to the base in fair territory. If a batted ball hits you and you're in foul ground, it's just that a foul ball. In fair territory, and it hits you in the air or on the ground. It's an out. You are put out in that situation. Sharp sticks the bat head out, pokes it over the screen straight back, and the count remains two and two. Talked earlier with the runners breaking on a 3-2 pitch with the bases loaded and two outs. You'll see the third base batter, the most tepid out of the three. Take a couple of steps and just try to avoid a line drive. Here's the 2-2 from Wilson to Sharp. It's lifted softly to shallow right center field. Heading over into the gap is Nick Dumino, who just entered the game as a defensive replacement. And Dumino retires this side, but not before the Rebels sent all nine batters to the plate plating four runs on three hits and three walks. And after five innings full, it's the Rebels up by double digits, a 10 to nothing lead over CBU. All right, fans, your hustling Rebels got a double last inning, which means it's time to see which lucky section will be winning three double doubles from In-N-Out Burger. Check the big board right now to see if you're in the lucky section. <laughs> Section 114, congratulations. If you're in section 114, you've won a free double-double from In-N-Out Burger. UNLV Baseball is presented by Dos Equis. No matter where you are watching this baseball season, be sure to buy a cold, crisp Dos Equis and yell, Go Rebels! Matt Neverett with you from early Wilson Stadium as we enter into the top of the sixth. A 10 to nothing lead for UNLV. Adding on in a major way with a four spot on the bottom of the fifth. Zach Simon back out for the top of the sixth. And his 86th pitch of the game is a fastball over the inside for a called strike to the left-handed batting Dusty Garcia. Started the game in center, now playing in right. He swings and grounds it to the right side. Over the glove of Gianni Horvat into right field. Garcia 
Puts the ball in play for the first time today and gets credited for a base hit. His third hit of the weekend and follows two walks. Simon's walked three batters, including Garcia twice. Garcia reaching on a base hit. Simon looking for his third double play ball, twisted up behind him. Looks like it'll have to come off the bat of Jake Skipworth, who grounded into an inning ending fielder's choice in the third. First pitch low. Skipworth 0 for 1. Fielder's choice and a walk back in his first plate appearance in the first. Garcia's got good speed off of first. Simon keeping an eye on him. 1 0 to Skipworth. Misses just low. That pitch over the plate, but below the kneecaps. Simon's gotten double play balls in each of the last two innings. Final two outs of the fourth was on a 4 6 3. Headed the fifth on a 6 4 3. This is low to move the count 3 0 here. And Simon working later into a game than he has all season. With the bullpen looking like it's starting to get up and loose behind him as he gets into the 90s in terms of the pitch count. Trying to find some command here on 3 0. And letter high fastball call for ball four. So a leadoff single followed by the fourth walk of the game. And we'll see how long the leash is on Simon. The 10 to nothing lead. Six innings thrown and three runs earned or less qualifies you for a quality start. Simon trying to get through that sixth inning here. Corey Vanderhoek out to go have a word. He'll draw the entirety of the infield in as well. This one is much to game plan for a potential bunt situation with Cole Howard standing in as it is to buy time for a potential reliever warming up. Obstructed view down the right field side. Simon's thrown 91 pitches so far. He got through the first two innings in 44 pitches. It then took him 39 to get through the next three. It took him 30 to get through the first inning alone. So pretty good when you're through 30 pitches through an inning. And you're able to get through four more in just over 50 pitches. And that's the first mound visit used up for UNLV out of seven. First time they've needed to come to the hill. Simon's had runners on all day, but he's been able to get out of the jams. This would be his most masterful work yet, leading 10 to nothing. Cole Howard stands in from the right. Big body DH, one of two. Takes that fastball spotted just off the outside of the plate. Definitely went low for ball one. Howard singled in the fourth against Simon to lead it off. Wiped out immediately as part of a double play up the middle. Howard also flied out to center to wrap up the first inning. Simon back in the strike category as he deals over the inside on the fastball. So as he's into the 90s, in terms of the pitch count, this is very, very likely the last handful of batters that he'll be trusted to face off against. Howarth, check swing, ground ball in front of the plate. Only play for Simon, the pitcher, is going to be to throw it to first for out number one. Scored 1-3 one, on the scorecard at home. As Garcia advances second to third. Skipworth up first to second with a 10-run lead and a couple of runners in scoring position. Now batting shortstop number eight. Not a whole George lot of Dino. opportunity there for Simon to kind of turn that into anything it wasn't. Take the out, move on with the big lead. Josh Pano bats with a couple of runners in scoring position. Pano's doubled and grounded into that aforementioned double play in the fourth. Howard to put out at second. Swings and rolls one foul down the third base side. Pano offers up at a slider. Simon had not thrown longer than four innings in any outing this year. He had thrown more than three once. He's trying to get through a season-high six today. CBU bullpen for the time being quiet. Well, it's been a rotating cast of characters all weekend. The pitch misses up and the counter ball on a strike. It's been a rotating cast for both the arms and the bats. Multiple pinch hitters used in each game. Gary Adcock in a non-conference weekend slate empties the bench. Pano goes the other way. Pop fly and foul ground on the first base side. Higgins gives it a run, runs out of room as it short hops the retaining fence on the first base side. Tough play for Higgins. He was unable to get there. But it goes as strike number two. One and two count to Pano with Shane Simpson in the on-deck circle. Wind blowing softly. Ever so slightly straight in as Simon comes set on one and two. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fought straight back. Able to stay alive is Pano. 
Simon, not a big strikeout artist. He had fanned 12 batters in 18 innings coming into the day. He's got one strikeout so far. It was against Matthew Dar in the second. Dar no longer in the game. Simon set again on two, one and two. Here's the offering. Just outside, although that's exactly where Jacob Sharp was set up. Trying to expand the zone on Josh Pano, but no dice. Pano's driven in three and scored three this weekend. Waves the bat as Simon comes set again. This time, rocking and firing on two and two. Slider grounded fair inside the third base side. Both runners will score as it rolls all the way to the fence. Jay Sharman scoops it up as Pano slams on the brakes at second. His second double of the day is his eighth of the season. Add another pair of RBIs. He's got 24 on the year, five this weekend alone. California Baptist on the board for the first time. Trailing 10 to two in the bottom of the six. Think at the top of the six with the visitors scoring for the first time since the 10th inning yesterday. So they won eight to seven. That'll do it for Simon. A quick hook for Stan Stolte is trying to stretch Simon through six, only able to get through five and a third. Zach Simon out. Your brother Sam Simon comes over to take over atop of the mound. So from Simon to Simon, we'll step aside for the pitching change with one out, one on, two runs across for California Baptist here in the sixth. Yeah, they have self. they have agents, we have self. Ladies and gentlemen, coming into pitch, relieving his brother, number 26, Sam Simon. You know. Sam Simon takes over for Zach Simon on the mound. Brother-brother connection here in the top of the sixth inning. California Baptist on the board for the first time on a two-RBI double from Josh Pano. Zach responsible for Pano off second. Sam's line starts with Shane Simpson, the designated hitter. That pitch down and outside for ball one. Zach with a partial line of two runs on seven hits and four walks over five and a third innings. He struck out just one batter, but able to get out of many jams throughout the day. One hop grounder picked up by the third baseman Murphy. He'll go the short way to Johnny Horvat standing on the bag. They got Pano in a rundown. Throw to Myro, who applies the tag in front of third base. Heads up play to get the lead runner there from Braden Murphy. Way off the base was Pano. Scored five, four, six on the put out at third base as Simpson reaches on a fielder's choice. Now batting second baseman, number six, Connor. You'll see that situation more often than you would think, but oftentimes first base, third baseman rather, just defaults to the out at first. Murphy. Had his head on a swivel. It retires Pano for route number two. Connor McGuire takes a ball down low. Snap throw goes down to first. It's low from Sharp. Good job by Kate Higgins to pick it out of the dirt and keep it from rolling into right field. They're keeping an eye on Shane Simpson over there for sure. Simpson, one of three in stolen base attempts on the year. McGuire offers up at a pitch low. And Sam Simon hoping to get out of the sixth inning. His brother Zach Simon's line is now closed. Pano, the last batter he faced. So five and a third, seven hits, two runs. Leaves in line for the win, does Zach Simon. This one's belted to left field. Back goes Sharman. He leaps at the wall. He's unable to get it. Rolls back towards the field of play, rounding third, and heading to the plate is Simon. Sharman popped up quickly after taking a hefty run straight into the padded outfield fence. That'll go as an RBI double for McGuire, but not without a great effort by Jay and left. 
third run of the inning is the first charge to Sam Simon. And it's now a 10-3 game. UNLV still leading in a major way in the top of the sixth inning. Bring him around. Garrett Ostrander, the leadoff man, steps in for the fourth time. Two for three with a pair of singles and a stolen base today. He's a first pitch slider outside for a called ball. Coming into the outing, Sam Simon 0-1 with a 7-2-3 ERA. In 10 outings, including a pair of spot starts, he's fanned eight, walked five over 18 and two-thirds innings. Ostrander fouls this pitch straight back to move the count even. Opponents batting 350 off Sam Simon. The younger of the two Simon brothers by two years. Both attended Centennial High School. Former high school teammates with Austin Krizik. One, one pitch outside. Two balls and a strike now to Ostrander. So for Zach Simon, qualifying for the win. Five and a third innings. Just two outs shy of a quality start with a pair of runs charged to the UNLV starter. Ostrander takes a fastball low and away for ball three. Three balls and a strike. For Simon, the five and a third innings, not only the longest outing by a UNLV starter this weekend, the two runs he allowed were the least between Carbajal, Beal, and Simon. Sam Simon issues ball four to Ostrander as the leadoff man reaches for the third time in four plate appearances. And the sixth inning continues. Eighth batter of the frame is the second batter in the lineup. Second plate appearance for Josiah Chavez. Came in as a pinch hitter in the fifth, grounded into a fielder's choice. Been behind the plate defensively ever since. Simon's first pitch to him. Upstairs call for a ball. Sam Simon pitching for the first time since the 16th, a week ago today. Took a no decision, allowing two runs on two hits over an inning and a loss against San Jose State. It was a 10-3 final the other way. 10-3 the score here today. Simon misses away once more. Two balls and no strikes to the left-handed batting Chavez. Simon in his second year in the program. Gives up a foul ball straight back. That one looked like it caught sharp on the inside of the leg. Yeah, he'll walk this one off. The home plate umpire Scott Jones will hand deliver a ball to Sam Simon to give Sharp as much time as he needs to recollect himself after the foul ball straight back. Simon stands 6-3, tips in at 200 pounds. A 2-1 record last year and a 4-5 ERA in his first year with the program. 19 strikeouts and 22 winnings, and a lowly opponent batting average of 272. Backs the batter away with a heater up by the eyes. Two balls and a strike now to Josiah Chavez. Two on, two down in the sixth. Chavez takes that one in for a strike, and it's now a 3-2 count. With two on and two down. 10 to three UNLV leads. Ostrander off first, McGuire off second. Break is the 3-2 pitch. Grounded to the first base side, picked up by Kate Higgins, who will win the foot race to the base himself. Chavez grounds out to retire the side in the top of the sixth inning. Three runs, scoring on three hits and two walks as California Baptist strands another pair of runners on. They've left eight on through six innings. Lancers on the board for the first time, but the Rebels leading big, entering into the bottom of the sixth. It's UNLV 10, CBU 3. So that means you can run the bases after the game like your favorite hustling rebel. Parents, be sure to pick up a waiver at the marketing table to sign it and turn in after the game, and then your folks can run around the bases.
Well, leading off the six for the Hustlin' Rebels, first baseman, number 14, Cade Higgins. UNLV Baseball presented by America First Credit Union enters into the bottom of the sixth inning. A seven-run advantage for the Hustlin' Rebels of UNLV. Cade Higgins, Austin Krizik, Braden Murphy, the middle three of the lineup, two up against Jacob Wilson, who's back out for a second inning of work. Right-hander misses just off the outside to the left-handed batting Cade Higgins. Wilson, six foot three, 210 pound, right-handed junior out of Menifee, California. Facing off against the Vegas native Cade Higgins, who's one of two with a double, a walk, and a pair of runs scored today. Ground rule double in the fifth inning, bounced over the fence and straight away center field on a bounce. This one way upstairs, two balls and no strikes to Higgy. With the way that that ball had bounced, kind of an unfortunate circumstance when it went over the fence. Higgins likely would have had at least three. Takes a 2-0 fastball spotted well over the outside for a called ball, called strike, beg your pardon. Austin Krizak on deck, having himself an outstanding performance today. Serving as the designated hitter, Braden Murphy hitless, but has driven in a run on a sacrifice fly back in the fifth inning. Higgy goes the other way, and a line drive twisted the left. Handful of steps back for Ostrander, and the left-handed leadoff hitter in left makes the catch. Round number one is Higgins drops to one for three on the day, but he still scored twice. Brings up Austin Krizik, who, as mentioned, has been phenomenal this afternoon. He scored three of the ten runs. He's driven in three more. He's got four total bases and a walk on top of it. Base is clearing triple back in the third off of Drew Nicochet out of the bullpen. It's a called strike one there. Singled in the second off the starter, Hammerling. And when he batted in the fifth, he did it against Brandon Ross, so he's facing off against his fourth pitcher in four bats. Grounds it up the middle, a bounding ball fielded in front of the base by the shortstop, Pano. Has to be quick to the base, and he is. 6-3 ground out, puts two up and two away here in the sixth for UNLV. The Rebels yet to be set down in order. In fact, the only time that they've reported three straight putouts was after the Alex Pimentel leadoff double in the first. Murphy's yet to reach base, but did earn his 13th RBI of the year back in the fifth. Sacrifice fly was Shane Simpson in right field at the time, making a great diving grab with a runner on third. Murph takes inside to move it 1-0. So it was a sacrifice fly with a little asterisk next to it. Scoring easily from third was Higgins. Murphy's grounded out to the mound and a shortstop as well. Murphy takes that center cut here, right down the chute for a called strike one. Great Murphy, a really interesting hitter. To be sure, power batter from the left side, plays all over the infield. And started games at first, second, and third this year. Look out, a line drive right back up the middle. Extends the bottom of the sixth inning on Braden Murphy's first hit of the day, second of the weekend, and number 29 on the year for the left-hander. That puts a runner on with two outs. As Paul Myro stands in hitless on the day, but he's walked twice. He's found ways on throughout the weekend. He's been walked four times. 11 at plate appearances. The bat on the shoulder here and works a fastball missing low. Myro grounds it out to second, back in the second inning. Since then has walked twice. Stole a base in the third. Came around to score as part of a four-run fifth inning. Off of first is Murphy. This one's grounded back up the middle and through. Back-to-back -back two out base hits from Murphy and Myro. As Murph advanced up to second base on Paul Myro's first hit of the game. And that brings up Santino Panaro with two out, two on in a 10 to three ball game. Gave you some scores from around the Mountain West Conference earlier. None of those games had started. The only final was that 12 to one win for New Mexico at Air Force. It's been all Lobos in the second game of the nightcap as well. Seven to two, the Lobos on top of the Falcons at the Academy in the top of the fourth. Panaro takes a curveball way upstairs. Santino's homered, walked, and grounded out so far today. And they're going to make the pitching change in the middle of the at-bat. The right-hander loose, ready to go. After ball one missed way upstairs from Wilson to Panaro, and coach Gary Adcock out to go grab his reliever. So we'll get another pitching change. He doesn't say a word to him as he walks by. You don't see that too often. 
Another pitching change as the sixth pitcher of the day comes in for California Baptist. Santino Panaro batting with two out, two on in the bottom of inning number six. Attention, please. Taking the mound for the Lancers, number 39, Jared Villalobos. And at the plate for UNLV, number 8, Santino Panaro. Left-hander Jared Villalobos on the hill with two outs and two on at the bottom of the sixth inning. And a 1-0 count to Santino Panaro. Jacob Wilson lifted in the middle of the at-bat as Villalobos picks up where Wilson left off, missing high for a ball. As Panaro now ahead, two balls, no strikes. Facing off against two pitchers in this same at-bat. It's the sixth pitcher of the game used by Gary Adcock, head coach of California Baptist, as Villalobos misses high. Count goes 3-0 to Panaro. Gianni Horvat on deck. It's Braden Murphy off second. Paul Myro off first. They both singled with two outs to reach. Villalobos, the Fresno native, the 5'11", 170-pound senior. Deals on 3-0, clips the inside of the fastball. At 89 to Panaro. Two-run home run in the second, got the scoring started. It's been a lead that the Rebels have not relinquished yet today. Villalobos deals out of the stretch. Breaking ball right down the chute. Up straight into the glove of the catcher, Chavez, for strike two. Three balls, no strikes to a full count at three and two. Both Murphy and Myra will be off with the pitch. Villalobos set, looks to second, deals to the plate. Runners go, Panaro lines one to left center. Heading back goes Dumanil. Center fielder won't get it, it splits the gap and rolls all the way to the fence. Two run score, Panaro looking for three. The throw from the shortstop, Pano, is in time. Santino not sliding, he looks to be injured. He came up lame instead of a slide attempt and tagged out trying to stretch the double to the triple. Panaro down in a heap at third, but his two RBI double extends the lead as the Rebels jump out to a 12-3 advantage. Treated on the third base side as Panaro is Sam Simon. Looks like he'll have the seventh when we return. At Raising Cane's, we know quality takes time, patience, and the best ingredients, which is why every chicken finger we serve is hand-battered and cooked to order just for you. We never take shortcuts. That doesn't mean you can. Introducing an even faster and easier way to order canes with our new app. Find your closest restaurant, customize your meal, pay, and schedule pickup. So next time, take it easy and order with the Raising Cane's app. Raising Cane's chicken fingers, one love. <laughs>
Defensive changes for the Rebels. Now in left field, number 47, Austin Krizik. Moving from left field to right field, number 35, Jay Sharman. UNLV Baseball presented by Finley Chevrolet, located at the Southwest at 215 in South Rainbow. Nevada's number one Chevrolet volume dealership. Frankly, we are customer driven. 12 to three, the lead for UNLV as we enter into the top of the seventh inning. Santino Panaro down in a heap after he's trying to stretch a two RBI double into a triple. He's removed from the game as the first pitch from Simon into Mitchell Simon is in for a called strike. Jason Sharman moves from left field to right field to replace Panaro and Austin Krizik We'll move from the DH to the left field spot. Out defensively for the first time today. And left now is Kriz. As Mitchell Simon bounds a ball foul down the third base side. And the count quickly. No balls and two strikes from Sam Simon to Mitchell Simon to lead off in the top of the seventh inning. Mitchell Simon, hitless today, takes a slider way outside. Ball and two strikes now. It's been a Simon party here on a Sunday. Zach going five and a third. Giving up three runs on seven hits, the pitcher of record for UNLV. His brother Sam, a lot, not charged for any of those runs yet. As this foul ball by Mitchell Simon is knocked straight back. 12 to three UNLV lead. 12 runs played it on just 11 hits. They've taken seven walks on the day as a ball club. Simon swings and misses at strike three. Sam Simon gets his first strikeout of the day. Between the two Simon brothers, it's just the second strikeout for UNLV pitching on the afternoon. And Mitchell Simon really struggling this weekend. Now three of 15 as he spikes the bat heading back into his own dugout. 0 for four today is Mitchell Simon. Dusty Garcia stands in from the left. One out, nobody on. You're in the top of the seventh inning pre-stretch break. First pitch swinging. Comes up empty on a changeup. Spun in by Sam Simon. Garcia's been the top hitter so far. Just in terms of getting on base for California Baptist today, he's walked twice, singled once, scored when he singled in the sixth. Takes this pitch for a called strike, and it's quickly nothing and two from Simon. Pitching for the fourth time this month. Last tossed a week ago today against San Jose State. Missing away with the changeup. Nope, one ball, two strikes now the count. Season high of four innings at Oklahoma. Simon. But no decision by going four scoreless against the Sooners. He gets another swing and a miss for strike three here, elevating the fastball over the shoulders of Garcia, who obliges on the second straight strikeout for Sam Simon. First two outs of the seventh, put on the board via the K. That brings up Jake Skipworth from the right side. Two outs, nobody on ahead of him. He's walked twice, bounced into a fielder's choice to end the third inning. Swings early and fouls the first pitch he sees straight back. Following today's matchup, the Rebels don't have to wait long for their next game. Tuesday, Wednesday, midweek set in Omaha, Nebraska at Creighton. As the pitch foul straight down, moves it quickly to nothing and two. The Rebels will play their first Mountain West action in almost two weeks next weekend when they go to San Diego to take on the Aztecs. Tony Gwynn Stadium plays host. The 0-2 just tips straight back. Sharp unable to squeeze the foul tip from Skipworth, and the count remains nothing and two. Friday, Saturday, Sunday series, 28th, 29th, and 30th of April. Next home games will be the 5th, 6th, and 7th of May against New Mexico as the Lobos come to town for their only trip of the year. Skipworth swings, fouls it into the mitt, sharp squeezes it. Sam Simon strikes out the side, three up, three down on a trio of strikeouts in the top of the 7th. That brings us to the stretch break in Las Vegas. Get up, move around, and we come back. It'll be the bottom of the 7th. 9-1-2, do up for the Hustlin' Rebels who lead the Lancers 12-3. Traditional 7th inning stretch. Let's hear you sing along to Take Me Out to the Ball Game.
changes for the Lancers. Coming into pitch, number 17, Luis Becerra. And now playing shortstop, number two, CJ Maciel. Now playing second base, number 20, Marty Munoz. At the plate for the Rebels, number three, Gianni Horvath. Another new pitcher takes them out for California Baptist as we get started with the bottom of the seventh. Gianni Horvat taking a called strike right down the middle from the right-hander wearing number 17, Luis Bacera, a true freshman out of the San Leandro Valley in California. Big kid at 6'4", 210 as a true freshman. Missing inside to the true sophomore Gianni Horvat for a called ball one to even the count. Sam Simon, one, two, three on a trio of strikeouts in the top of the seventh inning. Comes after CBU had struck out once prior in the entire game combined. Horvat laid around on the fastball. Foul ball goes into the seats to move it one and two. Becerra pitched yesterday through a third of an inning, allowed two hits, but no runs against him. This is away here. Becerra came in and they got the final out of the sixth inning before being removed for Seth Maddox. Ryan Delgado also closed the game out. Did up the save with Maddox the win. So Horvat lines a foul ball straight back. Two balls and two strikes to count against Gianni, who's grounded out, flied out, and reached on a fielder's choice. Speed out a double play ball on the fifth. That one's way outside from Becerra. The count goes full at three and two. Becerra now the seventh pitcher in the game. Used by Gary Adcock. The starter, Nathan Hemmerling, went two and a third. Nobody else has gone even two innings yet. Horvat takes a called ball four. He was down 0-2. That's a great at bat for Gianni at the bottom of the lineup and brings up Alex Pimentel. A couple of defensive changes as there have been many throughout the day and the weekend for California Baptist. C.J. Maciel into the game, taking over for the shortstop Josh Pano. Marty Munoz playing at second. Alex Pimentel back at the top of the lineup. Two hits in four plate appearances today. He's taken a walk and struck out as well. Takes ball one inside. So just to reset the defense with a lot of substitutions for CBU. Josiah Chavez doing the catching. Jake Skipworth and Mitchell Simon at first and third respectively. Neither of those have changed. Corner infields remain the same as Pimentel takes a strike over the outside. Maciel at short. Munoz, the second baseman. Garrett Ostrander in left. One of just three starters out of the defense still out there. Nick Dumanel. Inserted in center field two innings ago, Dusty Garcia started the game in center, now playing in right. California Baptist, who's emptied the bench early and often throughout the series. Pimentel goes up, two balls and a strike. Pretty productive day atop the lineup for the center fielder, no Ryland Charles. This pitch bounces, skips way away from the catcher. Chavez down the third base side. Up to second on a wild pitch goes Horvat. Mentioned that Nate Hemmerling went two and a third innings. He's still the pitcher of record, giving up the first five runs of the game for UNLV. Drew Nicochet then went an inning and two thirds. One out recorded each by Brandon Ross and Downer in the same inning. Jacob Wilson threw a full inning through the sixth. He was pulled for Jared Villalobos in the bottom of that inning. He gave up a double to Pinar, but got the out on the base pass. And now it's Becerra as the seventh pitcher for the Lancers. It's 3-1 to Pimentel. Grounded to third, picked up on the first hop. By the third baseman, Simon, whose throw goes across to fellow starter Jake Skipworth at first in time. No advancement for Horvat from second to third. At the plate, right fielder, number 35, Jay Sharman. Now the runner in scoring position and one out in a 12-3 game. It's Jay Sharman. Sharman in from the left with Horvat off second. 12 to 3 the score. First pitch way high for ball one. The defensive changes continued and snuck one under my eye. Connor McGuire shifted from second to third, so no longer Mitchell Simon at third base. Giving credit for the assist on the Pimentel put out is McGuire at third. Scorecard all kinds of messed up here with all these substitutions in the bottom of the seventh inning. Sharman takes low. Two balls and no strikes to count to Jay. RBI base hit in the fifth inning. Scoring Gianni Horvat, capping the scoring in that four-run frame. 
He's walked and struck out twice early in the game. Bouncing ball gets past the catcher, Chavez, and actually skipped out in front of him. He was able to get a piece of that wild pitch that Holrad right, moved from second to third on. Not that from our vantage point back here that that thing was behind the backstop, but instead it was just out in front of him. He had no clue either way. So Chavez back in the squad. Count three balls and no strikes to Jay Sharman. Jacob Sharp watching away on deck. Infield drawn in, 3-0 pitch. Green light for Sharman. He bloops it over the head of the shortstop. It falls in the infield dirt for a base hit as Horvat scores for the second time today. Second time he's been driven around by Sharman, who's got seven RBIs on the year. And that'll do it. Looks like the teams have agreed to a mercy rule. It's UNLV, the 13-3 win. That turns into a walk-off infield single for Jay Sharman. And both of these sides on a getaway day, agreeing to a mercy rule, a 10-run lead here in the bottom of the seventh as UNLV is going to walk out winners on Sunday after dropping the first two games of the series. UNLV winning with 13 runs on 12 hits. They took advantage of a lot of walks. California Baptist, not the cleanest of games either. Three runs on eight hits for the visiting Lancers. Clean defensive game either way as neither team committed an error. UNLV left five, California Baptist left eight. The decision either way going to the starters as Zach Simon earns his first win in the Scarlet and Gray. Goes to one and one after going five and a third. Three runs on seven hits for Simon in the win to go to one and one. Nate Hemmerling takes the loss to go to one and two. CBU starter gave up five runs on four hits over two and one-third innings. Walked two, struck out three. It was the Rebel Bats that came up in a big way in a game that ended up only taking two hours and 16 minutes to get through the bottom of the seventh, which is one out recorded in the inning. The win pushes UNLV to 15 and 22 on the year. They're back to 500 at home at 8 and 8 as CBU drops to 21 and 19, although winners of the first two games of the series before the Mercy Rule lost today, that drops them to 11 and 12 on the road. 13 to three win for UNLV, back in action on Tuesday at Creighton. Our next broadcast will be next weekend, May 5th, beg your pardon, May 5th, 6th and 7th, the next home series for UNLV. They'll take on New Mexico right here at Early Wilson Stadium. For everybody here at UNLV Athletics, I'm Matt Neverett signing off and saying thank you too much for tuning in with the Rebels winning 13-3 over California Baptist on a Sunday to stave off the weekend sweep so long from early Wilson Stadium.